Now, there's some great new data I want to share with you about reversing diabetes by getting rid of the fat in your liver. Now, of course, they don't mention the word reversing diabetes. They call it putting diabetes in remission, but there's some interesting data I want to share with you. So apparently, there's a tremendous amount of data pointing to insulin resistance starting in the muscles and then in your liver, okay? But there's some conflicting data because other data points to it starting in your muscles and then it transfers to the liver. But all you need to know is if you fix insulin resistance, okay, you can fix diabetes. And if you have a fatty liver, you're not going to be able to fix insulin resistance for any period of time. You might feel a little bit better, but that fat in your liver must be removed. So what is this connection between a fatty liver and diabetes? Well, one of the functions of the liver beyond the detoxification function is the storage of glucose as glycogen. So typically you have a certain amount of storage of glycogen in your liver and also in your muscles. And that glucose in the liver supplies your brain and other organs with glucose between meals and then when you exercise. And that glycogen in your liver supplies the fuel to your brain, okay, between meals and also when you're exercising. Whereas the muscle glycogen pretty much only supplies the muscles with energy or glucose. But when you have insulin resistance, you don't really get that benefit. And so when you exercise, your performance isn't very good. You don't have good endurance. You get a lot of fatigue, especially with exercise. And then when you get insulin resistance in your liver, over a period of time, that develops into prediabetes and diabetes because of the spill-off of fat that then it's called ectopic. It, it actually goes out of the fat cell and then it starts accumulating around the pancreas, okay, and inside the pancreas. And then because the pancreas controls insulin through the beta cells, the beta cells start to malfunction, and then you get diabetes. And it's been documented that you can't reverse that, but that is absolutely positively not true. You can reverse um, beta cell dysfunction. Now, I'm not talking about in type 1 diabetes. I'm talking about type 2 diabetes. And the way you would reverse it is you just need to get rid of the fat in the pancreas, okay? And uh, allow the uh, cell to come back. But to fix the pancreas, you have to first fix the liver. You have to remove the fat from the liver so you can improve insulin resistance, which, by the way, can happen in six days. But the pancreas could take a little bit longer. It could take like eight weeks. So what am I actually saying? I'm saying this. If you have diabetes or prediabetes or insulin resistance, you need to focus on removing the fat from your liver, okay, as a primary goal. And then as you do that, the fat from your pancreas will also decrease. And then the function of the beta cell of the pancreas will start to improve. Now, the question is, how do you do it, right? How do you do it? Do you just start going on a low-fat diet? Do you start to exercise more? What is the best thing to do? Well, first, I need to explain something to you because... Um, a lot of people don't know that your brain can run on two types of fuel, okay? It can run on glucose, and it can run on ketones. And because there's so much bad PR on ketones, right? Like, oh yeah, if you go on a ketogenic diet over a period of time, you'll develop ketoacidosis, and that's a very uh, severe pathology, so you need to avoid ketones, right? That's completely and utterly false. That only occurs when you're type 1 diabetic. So if people drink that Kool-Aid and they buy into that, then they're left with this uh, fuel source called glucose because mainstream medicine will tell you that, well, the brain prefers glucose and that's really the only fuel that you need to focus on. And so if that's all the data you have, boy, you're going to have a hard time fixing this problem. So let me just uh, mention this word hypoglycemia, right? We have low blood sugars. Think about all of the brain symptoms with hypoglycemia. You have problems with your thinking, memory, learning. Think about how many kids in school that have low blood sugars, right? And they're trying to learn on top of that. Headache, tired, blurred vision, lightheadedness, all these issues with your head. Hypoglycemia originates in your liver. Why? Because of the glycogen restored being inhibited because of the fatty liver or dysfunctional liver. So when your liver doesn't work, you can't store glycogen properly. The stored sugar in your uh, muscles is not readily available to you. It's only going to supply your muscles. The brain glucose is dependent on the liver function, but 
if you have a fatty liver, which a lot of people do, especially if they're overweight, they're not going to be able to store glycogen properly. And the more fat they accumulate in the liver, the more insulin resistance they have, and the more insulin that's going to go higher, pushing your blood sugars down, giving you this hypoglycemia and all the symptoms that are associated with it. Now, you might think that it takes a lot of fat in your liver to cause insulin resistance, but it doesn't. I just found some interesting data that you can develop insulin resistance with less than 2% of the liver being fatty. I think this specific number was 1.85% of your liver being fatty and you developing insulin resistance symptoms, which is, to me, very, very low. So in other words, it only takes a little bit of this fat on your liver to start this process. You see, this insulin resistance happens all over the place. It's in the liver, okay? It's also in your muscles, like I mentioned. It's also in your brain. So if your diet has too much glucose, you literally are slowly killing off your neurons, which is kind of a paradox because apparently like even Alzheimer's and a lot of brain issues occur because you're starving the neurons of glucose. But too much glucose will actually kill the neurons. So the neurons die if you don't feed the glucose and the neurons die if you feed the neurons glucose. So what's going on here? Well, maybe the brain wasn't designed to run on glucose in the first place. So just maybe when you increase glucose to the brain cells, uh, the body protects the brain cells by developing this resistance, making it more difficult to penetrate. And maybe your body's trying to tell you, don't consume glucose because then that's going to create a problem. And of course, in the background, we have the mechanism being insulin resistance. So the more insulin resistance, the less glucose you can absorb in the neuron because the neuron needs insulin to be able to absorb glucose. And this is why one of the treatments that they're using for this, like Alzheimer's or dementia, is a intranasal insulin spray where they spray this insulin up your sinuses. It goes directly in the brain and it improves dementia symptoms. Now that's adding more insulin to your brain. When you try to increase your insulin in your brain by eating more glucose, all you do is you just increase more resistance, okay? So it doesn't work. So if we just step back for a moment and take a look at this problem, how do we reverse diabetes, okay? How do we reverse all these cognitive problems that we have associated with this blood sugar issue that's associated with a fatty liver? First of all, you have to realize that the brain prefers not glucose, but ketones. The way to fix the liver is to run your body on ketones, not glucose. The way to reverse the fat on your pancreas and reverse the beta cell function is to run the body on ketones. Ketones will improve cholesterol, triglyceride, and other lipids in your liver. Ketones will help decrease fat on your liver. This is why the ketogenic diet has been shown to decrease 50% of the fat on your liver within two weeks. How can it do that? Because when you actually decrease the glucose, you switch the body into ketones, and within even six days, you're improving significantly insulin resistance on your liver. So now everything's going to start working. You're also going to have decreased inflammation in the liver. You're going to have less fibrosis. You're going to have improved liver function and decreased liver enzymes. And I'm going to put some links down below to just show you that I'm, I'm not just making this up. All of this data is validated. In summary, you fix a fatty liver, you fix your brain, you fix diabetes, if we want to just keep it simple. All right, so what are some key things that you can do right now to turn this around? Get on the ketogenic diet. Very simply, make the carbohydrates you eat vegetable carbohydrates. One type of carbohydrate is fiber, and vegetables have a lot of fiber. And fiber is one of the only things that will not increase insulin. So now you can have your carbohydrates as long as they're high fiber carbohydrates. And so when you eat a meal, I do recommend that you start with your vegetables first, right? And your salad. That way you get a lot of the phytonutrients and other nutrients from those foods that can actually help to decrease the complications of the diabetes you have. Then you have your protein, right? Protein is very important. Don't have like a high amount of protein. Have a moderate amount of protein. Uh, I think the best way to identify the amounts, um, to keep it really simple, is if you're female, have protein the size of the palm of your hand. If you are a male, consume twice that. 
two pieces of protein the size of the palm of your hand. And I think it's a good idea to start with the vegetables first, then the protein, because if you start with the protein first, um, a lot of times people won't consume those vegetables. Also add apple cider vinegar, like a tablespoon or two in a glass of water, and you drink that down. Not only is that going to help you with digestion, that is going to greatly help you with your blood sugars, specifically making insulin more sensitive. Apple cider vinegar is an amazing remedy for speeding up the process of reversing this insulin resistance situation. When you think about it, what is apple cider vinegar? It's acetic acid. Apple cider vinegar is actually a fatty acid. It's a type of fat. We don't think about it as a type of fat, but fats in general are the other thing that doesn't stimulate insulin, but with apple cider vinegar. Uh, you can actually use that to get energy, and you can use that as one strategy to speed up the process. And also, there's some great data to show that acetic acid speeds up the removal of fat from your liver. And I would also add some lemon as well, because that would help you. Okay, next point. Let your appetite dictate when you eat. You're going to find, as you do this and you switch to ketones, you're going to lose your appetite and your cravings. It's going to make it very easy to stay on this program. So just don't eat if you're not hungry and only eat when you're hungry. So really pay attention to your appetite because what we want to do is we want you to eat less, less frequent. We want you to avoid snacks because we want to get rid of this habit that we have to eat three times a day, which is absolutely not true, that we have to have these snacks to prevent hypoglycemia, which is not true. Because every time you eat, you, you stimulate insulin. And at the very maximum, I would only eat two meals a day. This is going to greatly speed up getting rid of the fat off your liver and turning this whole diabetes thing upside down to put you in remission. We'll call it remission. And the last thing, just to put the icing on the cake, is to implement exercise on a regular basis. Exercise will greatly help you with insulin resistance, actually improve the resistance, making insulin more sensitive. All right, so I hope it gave you a new viewpoint on this diabetes thing and how to reverse it. Now all you need to do is get the details of how to do it. And for that information, I put it up right here.